Now, folks, listen to me, please. I told you that being prepared is no joking matter. I'm going to ask. I, I, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm asking you to, to hear this pastor like you've never heard any preacher in your life now. Because many of your souls depend on it right now. Folks, it's time to take the word of God seriously. God means what he says. But I honestly believe that God looks down on a church that's fast asleep. He's looking down right now on a church that is unconcerned about his soon coming. The church no longer is intimate with Christ, no longer dependent wholly on God, dependent on the Holy Spirit, but running around with schemes and plans and dreams and networking and strategizing and committee meetings, trying in the flesh and sweat, trying to make it rather than depend on God, Almighty God. The church doesn't need anything else but God Almighty on his throne. And now, for the sake of unity, compromise in comes the gospel of prosperity and the good life i have to stay on my knees like i did this past week get low with god and just walk and cry and scream oh god break my heart don't let me get addicted to the easy life the desire for things that's why the lord says don't set your heart on the things of this world but set your heart on me jesus said i will be your life and there's a thought that says, oh, Lord, one of these days, this is all going to burn. This is not my life here, Lord. Thank you for this piece of furniture. Thank you for my car. Thank you for the finances you're supplying. But, oh, God, it's all going up in smoke very soon, Lord. You're my life. When you have time for friends, for family, for relatives, you have no time to dig into the Word of God. You have no time to pray and seek the face of God. And you tell me Christ is your life? But multitudes today are being saturated with your okay messages. How to make him everything in your life so that you don't need the applause of man. You don't need to produce something. You don't have to write something. You don't have to do something. But you lean on him. And the greatest thing that you're getting from God is revelation of who Christ is. I don't care if anyone ever hears my name again. I don't care if I ever speak to another conference. I've made up my mind with God if the rest of my life were spent nursing Gwen. I would enjoy and rejoice in the Lord. If that were my calling, that's what I would do. You see, God goes through the land. He searches every church in the nation. He searches every pastor's study. He goes through every church looking for seekers. He's looking for those who are into the Word of God who have taken time. If we are not seeking His face, we are in no position to receive His blessings. In the United States, we're getting letters now from pastors' wives who said, I've been trying to find out why my husband has changed. He doesn't love me anymore. He's empty in the pulpit. He has no anointing. What's happened to him? And they find out. They open the door and they see their husbands watching filthy pornography. I don't want my eyes polluted. I don't want to be a part of this. I don't care who doesn't pray. I'm going to pray. I don't care who doesn't read the Bible. I'm going to read my Bible. I want nothing to do with it. And I cry, oh God, where are the voices? Where are the people that cry out against them? Where are the praying people? And I say, God, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, Keep me on my knees. And I was in anguish. I was in anguish four blocks from here on Broadway. Weeping and crying and wailing. I wasn't looking for a ministry. I wasn't looking to build a church. I was feeling God's pain. For a lost city. He's going to show you the condition of his church. He's going to show you the condition of your own heart. And he's going to ask you a question. What is it to you? How can you tell me that you love him and you're ready to go and you neglect him day after day after day? Don't tell me you're going. You're not going. You're going to be left behind. 
God's promised if you will wage war against every sin, every desire that's contrary to Christ, I'll be with you, I'll go before you. But folks, the man who really wins the battle, the man who's ready to face anything that the devil throws out of hell, is the man or woman that's been studying God when there's no crisis, when everything is well, when there seems to be blessing and prosperity. That man is diligent before God and seeks his face. A praying man is as bold as a lion. There's no demon, there's no devil in hell that'll scare him. What God desires more than anything, and I think what blesses the heart of God in heaven, is that those in their good times when all is well, they're not parked in front of a television set watching some filth. They're not foolishly laughing at some program. They are taking special loving time alone with God. They're praying for their families, building up faith for the hour of tribulation. They're seeking the face of God. And your family is in trouble. If you're not a praying man, no amount of preaching, no amount of teaching, no amount of counseling, nothing going to get through to you, nothing going to do the job until you yourself get on your face before God lay hold of heaven. Keep us on our face. God, keep me broken. God, keep this church broken. God, don't let us sit back on a crest of blessing and get lazy and see disorder come again to this house. We don't just want crowds. We want your glory in this house, oh God. We want your glory in your power. I tremble at your word. Let us tremble this morning that it's possible for godly men and godly women who once prayed, who once had such an anointing to finally lose it this day of temptation when all hell is breaking loose. God, help us determine I will seek God. I will seek God with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all that's in me. That we must not forget, never forget, God's grief against sin in his house and in our own lives. We'll preach grace, we will preach mercy. But folks, I want you to know something. God says the day of grace is about to end. The day of grace is coming to an end. Beloved, the Lord loves his church. He loves his people with an undying love. But we are so bent on going our own way. We're so bent on drifting. We're so bent on, on, on giving up that burden of the Lord. That's why God has to keep building a fire on us. I know he has to do that in me. He has to do that in me every, every day. He has to keep stirring my heart. God says, I'm moving. I'm going to do what I promised to do in the last days. Hallelujah. Through the pouring out of the Holy Ghost. God is going to sanctify his church. He's going to sanctify his pulpit. Folks, God has a plan he's working on. You can't see it. I'll tell you, if you knew what God had in store for you, if you seek him, you'd be so rejoicing you couldn't contain yourself right now. But that's not going to happen if I don't seek him. I can abort that whole plan and end up in disaster and ruin. Right now, you set your heart Here's your prophetic word from heaven. If you seek me, you'll find me. I can't help believing in closing that there's going to be a victory march in glory. I'm so glad I'm saved. <clears throat> I love you, Jesus.